to the last video, we told you about Greenland in China. Now, in this video, we're going to tell you about Greenland's operation in Australia. It entered the market in 2013, a market which was highly attractive. So, one of the main reasons why they entered the market is high demand, a large growing market of 6.3% each year, as well as a stable econ economy of over 20 years of economic growth. Now, having that as mind as an attractive market. We so we had a look at Greenland's value chain and compared um, how they had to adopt it, their key activities from their Chinese operations uh, to their Australian operations. Yeah. And we can see that in China, they could deploy all these activities internally and giving them high control and efficiency over their domestic operations. In Australia, on the other hand, they have had to find a local partners for all these activities. And we compare this with other Chinese real estate companies such as Everglade and Country Garden and, and they have actually had to adopt their value chain in the same way with finding local partners. So we can draw the conclusion that Chinese real estate companies are facing a high level of liability of foreigners in Australia. We conducted a five forces analysis to get some additional information about the industry. From that, we could conclude that there is a super high uh, rivalry in the industry coming from both domestic, foreign, and other Chinese companies. As a reference, the total industry is worth $40.3 billion, and Greenland's seven projects in the country are only worth $2 billion. And further, in recent years, demand and prices have been increasing, causes further challenges for Greenland's Australian operations. Additional challenges faced by companies such as Greenland in the Australian landscape have mainly come from the institutional background. What we've seen is over $5 billion in China's ODI come into Australian shores, whereby our federal, state and local governments have had to come and mitigate all of this demand. So what we've seen is new laws on land acquisition, on credit restrictions as well, so lending to them, and new taxation laws as well in order to prevent such a demand swamping out Australian markets. So now I'll pass it on. Summarizing all the points discussed, we can conclude that though Greenland selected a good time to enter the market, but since then it has been facing various problems such as liability of foreigners, tough competition, uh, de decreasing demand, and stringent policies forcing them to adapt their low value chain accordingly and posing continuous pressure on them. Let's wait and watch what time I have to say about Greenland. Thank you.